Hey guys, welcome to our Sometimes Tuesday uh, thrift uh, flip a palooza. We just have a bunch of thrift flips that we still have to finish. Jimmy did what, 10? 10, well, yeah, 10. And, and you then did I one, had 11. one side project that I did, and then we still have one, two, three, four, five, six that need done. Yeah. And then, oh, seven, there's one up in the in the bathroom, I'll bring it down and show so you. So I did, uh, we did 11 flips yesterday and this morning, finishing those up. We just put that short up. And today we're gonna finish up these items. If you guys are new here and you see these and you would like to buy them, you can go to jamierayvintage.com under Saturday Thrift Haul. A few are still available. Most of them have sold, um, except I'm not seeing, oh, Karen is on here. I was like, I'm not seeing comments, but. They just haven't commented. And if you want to use the paint products, we also have those at jamierayvintage.com. I will try to occasionally drop links when I'm not busy painting stuff. We just thought, hey, we got stuff to paint. Let's go live. Yeah, we were just going to go live on Facebook. And then I'm like, let's do it. Let's just go everywhere. So a couple right, things gonna, on this. I'm going to soak this in the sink. So this came, I thrifted it without a handle. It was like two or three bucks. I can't remember now. We thrift so many things. If I'm not looking right at it, you know, we just try not to ever really spend more than five, six bucks. So I know it wasn't more than that for sure. It's got this star on the front. And while the star is great. Did you use this and not wash it? No, that's from you. <gasps> I did not. You did it. You didn't wash Usually the brush. Usually you're the one that doesn't wash I'm your I'm pulling brushes. the star off. <laughs> Jamie's... Jamie was getting after me earlier today because I am notorious for using the brushes, throwing them in the jar of the water that lives behind the sink most days. And, uh, you know, I just leave them there until some passerby decides they're going to wash them. We call it the, the paintbrush fairy, which is usually me. I'm lucky, though, if you put them in there because he'll like the other day he was doing something with liquid patina, which you have to put that in water right away. And he just left the brush out. And then I'm the one sitting over there with warm, soapy water scrubbing. So. I guess I'm guilty too. Ye who has not done a paintbrush sin cast the first stone. Is that scriptural? It's the gospel of paintbrushes, according to Jamie. So, <laughs> anyways, all right, let's see. Uh, Ray's Restoration is repainting her room, watching us. Gotta go get and pliers. And he says, I usually work Monday through Friday and don't get to see a live. Are you off for funsies or? Hopefully you're not sick because it has been going around. Sherry says, I love the Sometimes Tuesday get together. Well, last week we got together. It was too late. We interrupted Debbie's live because if you guys don't follow Debbie's design diary, she goes live at 2 o'clock Pacific time, which is 3 o'clock our time. It really does get to be like this crazy um, creator live stream dance. Like... There's always someone live, right? That is true. <laughs> we have a lot of crossover with Debbie. So if you want to watch more, I think Debbie will be live, I think, unless she has something going on. She'll be live today on her channel. All right. So okay. I did something kind of fun. This was already a yardstick that we did on a Waste Not Wednesday, and it's just been sitting in the garage. We darkened, decrepited the wood, got it all nice and dark. This is just common board pine. But then I did a whole yardstick on it, not just a ruler. Uh, which is typically 12 inches. We did a whole yardstick. And then it's got like the Kaysville down here from one of the uh, grain sacks that we did, the grain sack mini stencils. But I just chopped it, the yardstick, right at uh, about 11 inches. <laughs> and I'm going to put it right in here. And I've already pre drilled the holes and everything. So hopefully we don't get any obnoxious splitting. Let me make sure I'm doing this on the right side. Cindy said that she took the day off because her son's getting his driver's license. Yay, that's exciting. That's exciting. I actually am going to wait to screw this in because I think we're painting the box. And I'm just starting with DIY's weathered wood. We carry this on the website. Sometimes when I don't know where I'm going with what I'm doing, I just pick a color and start. And I usually will go light or dark. In this case, I decided to pick a dark color because the wood is light. So when it's dry and I distress it back, that light wood will have some contrast. So just in case you guys are ever like, you know, I go to start projects and I just, it's failure to start, right? Like you just don't know where to go. You don't always have to have a complete vision. So my rule of thumb is if it's light, I go dark. If it's dark, I go light. Reminds me of that movie, Failure to Launch. Failure to Launch. Sometimes it's where failure their, their, to craft. Their grown adult son wasn't moving out or moving on. <laughs> Is the chest available? Linda, it was the last time I checked this morning. I know this was available. I think all of that has sold. And I have a couple of other pieces I'll show you in a minute once I get this painted that I finished up yesterday. 
that still had not been claimed. But usually once they get painted, they go pretty fast. All right, so I have faded burlap and I just did a project. If you guys remember the Captain America shield tray. Oh my god. I I scrapped the decoupage idea. I didn't wasn't loving that. I if if I was going to do that, I should have done a lighter color underneath to make the decoupage pop. And it just, I wasn't feeling it. So I sanded that all off, took about 30 seconds um, with some 80 grit sandpaper. And I've redone it and it's sitting over there. And once I get a coat of paint on this, I'll show you what the faded burlap looks like. It's pretty, it turned out so much better. We're really into paint layers over here. So I'm like, if I don't like something, it's just a layer. It's like part of the process, right? You're was, getting there. I was like, now that decoupage is just texture. I, I must, I, sh I should probably disclaim, I didn't sand it all the way down to bare wood. I just sanded it smooth and got off any of the loose edges. Karen's, Karen is curious what I'm going to do with it. She has a chest like this. So my plan, we'll see, I can't guarantee it, is to go dark. Then I'm going to distress it to bring back some of the wood. And then I might do something to stain the wood that's shown. I haven't decided. And I'm for sure going to put a big fat stencil on the front and some sort of like not. I don't know if we have anything here. If we don't, I'll go to the shop. But I want to have some sort of pool on the top. That's the plan. Um, we have a ton of pools. We have to put the pool here, like on the front, so you can like pull it open. Yeah. Because yeah. I want it to look like a miniature version of an old school trunk. So this wood has a ton of texture on it. So I'm going to distress this back. I'm just going to do one coat and then we'll distress it once it's dry. I'm going to hop on and just see if I can. Did you do a this. short on that? On your, on the tray? No, no. I did a short on the other 10 things I painted yesterday. Okay. So the sh it's, is that just like in stories? I saw you filming this. Um, yeah, it's on Where all did that the, I put it on all the platforms except for YouTube because you need to edit it down. Oh, gotcha. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna share the whole um, thrift haul and it is already done by featured. So it'll show you what hasn't sold. Um, and the chest is on there. Sorry guys, Caitlin is not on here, so. She's been sick. She's, She's been sick and this is our family's been sick. Tuesday. I don't know of anyone right now in my life that has not been sick quite a bit this winter. I know, it's been crazy. All right. So, you know, we're just Linda. rolling with the punches and doing what we can, right? What color are you using? Zach? This is faded burlap in DIY, the clay-based paint. Um, and just going to do one coat. You can see how well it's covering even in this. It's like a, it's a strange color. It's almost like a taupey type color, but in some lighting, it looks like it's like a purple gray. In other lighting, it looks like it's a brown gray. It's a blue brown gray. Yeah. It's, it's a great color in some, and in some lighting, like if you get, if you have like yellowish lights, it almost looks like crockery. Um, Janet says, where are you selling before painting? I'm confused. So Janet, we go live every Saturday night and we do a thrift haul and I will list on the listing if it's going to be painted. And many times people will buy it, not knowing what we're going to do with it. And then yeah, we, we got to finish it. So we usually have so many items that we can't paint all of them in the thrift hall. We try to only be live for about an hour so that, you know, our East Coast friends can get to bed. And so Jamie can get to bed. Because it's like 1130 by the time we're done over there. And we used to not do it, but then we would have people that would say, well, can I buy it? I don't care what you do with it. I want to buy it. So we just started listing the things on our website before we painted them. And then people know that it's just luck of the draw. We, However we finish it, you get it. We definitely time. have a style though. Like yeah. we're not really, we don't really often veer from it. You Unless do. we're experiment oh, yeah. You're I'm experimenting. A wild card. You've experimented a lot in your I youth. do a lot of experimenting with the paint. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how things sell before they're finished. And it's kind of fun. People people like to see what we do with it. All right. Um, Linda, did that link work for you? And Rashawn is on here. Um, and Paula shared it. Paula, thank you for sharing that. We are going to start randomly picking people because on Facebook, we can't do it on YouTube, but on Facebook, it'll show us like if people have shared and we're going to start randomly picking people that have shared and then we'll tag you and um, ask you to send us your address and we'll mail you something fun. And I, it's not just because I need to clean out my craft room. Okay. Maybe it's because I need to clean out my craft room. If you follow along with stories at all, you can see we're starting to clean out the basement and there are some treasures down there and we're not parting with all of them. But they've been sitting down there for two years from the other house and just haven't found. Some of them are found... not two whole years. And most of them. 
Seb's making me deal with it. I either have to find somewhere to put it or it's going to the shop. And if it goes to the shop, then that means it will get sold. It will get sold, which is fine. All right. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to leave this just stained, but I'm going to distress this back to that darker wood in a moment once we get this done. And that's going to leave this just the, the lighter uh, faded burlap color just sitting on top. All right. Next project is this little butterfly. This is like an MDF IKEA butterfly cutout, and I think I'm going to scrape that off. We've been loving the, the cutouts. Thing. We did the sheep cutout and um, decoupaged flout like a flower paper on it, and we happened to be in the shop when the customer came by to pick it up, and she loved it. So that made me happy. Originally, I was going to put like uh, sheep in French on the sheep, but the word was not my favorite. And so I decided to take a it instead. It's basically mutton. Yeah. Which, which <laughs> in is in more English, of a you meal. would say it mutton. <laughs> to me, mutton sounds like the meal. All right. Scrape those stickers off. Going to paint this. I might as well just paint it with the faded burlap. It's light enough color that'll brighten up whatever paper I put on there. I'm going to get rid of that yellow butterfly. It wasn't terrible. It's just, or yellow. Did I say yellow? Red butterfly. Marcia says, is it possible to get notified when your paid for groups are coming on if you're not a paid member? No, we put, so sometimes I'll put in the January vintage group, I'll put a notice in there because sometimes people don't see it in the places that are just for paid members, but I don't put the link. Um, but I usually will do community and if it's on YouTube and my Facebook and Instagram subscribers, we have like our own group or chat and I'll put the links in there. So that way they know, but we go live like every other Tuesday. So this week we're, we're not, not going live. live today, right? Last week we did we go three lives. We had business coaching, our channel membership and um, our sometimes Tuesday live. And this week we do not have channel memberships. So that's why we're doing this early. Then we'll do business coaching. And then the next week we'll do an extra live or channel membership. I'm feeling, Anyways, I'm hopefully that I'm makes feeling sense. a little tired after listening you list off our schedule. <laughs> That's why last week, the Sometimes Tuesday, was so late just because we had so many other lives. I'm going to show your update. If you guys have just not... just grab the bottom. Don't forget the bottom. Oh, you didn't. You, for you forgot the bottom. Oh, you didn't screw the bottom up. No, nope. I'm going to... I just set it on there for a picture because I'm taking it apart to ship it because it's already oh, okay. sold. <laughs> so I will show you. If you guys saw the Captain America short or you watched the thrift haul, this used to be all Americana. Then Zeb started decoupaging it and didn't like that. So then he went with like a crockery vibe. Look at the bottom. That's the best part. He used the leaves from the, the mini crock stencils to go around the bottom. Here's the base. I'll back up so you can see it all together. And we're going to ship it separate. And we got rid of the star and put a knob on the top. And this is already sold, I believe. But here it is from back here. I think it turned out really great. He was going to decoupage it, but it was a hot mess. But here's the thing. Rather than take the decoupage paper off, we just gave it a base coat of cottage colors. And then he went over it with um, faded burlap. Yep. And then it just has really cool texture. And then stenciled it with weathered wood. Yep. And a couple of the uh, grain sack mini stencils. And then you sealed it with final finishes in yes. satin? Yeah, the final finishes top coat. It, it hardens up super good. Um, everybody says that looks so much better. Thank you. I thought it turned out great. I, you know, I was winging it. I was going to stencil the whole bottom. That wasn't going to work out for me. Uh, and then I was like, okay, now I'm going to decoupage the whole bottom. And then I next morning I woke up, I'm like, no. I don't like it. And Jamie's like, yeah, no. <laughs> so we always paint everything unless somebody emails Caitlin before we paint it and says, hey, I don't want that painted. And it will say on the title, like, will be painted. So that way you know. Faded burlap color of the what day. I think I'll dark wax this one, though, to bring out he some did of it. this no detail. More Captain America. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's any questions. What would you use on a composite outdoor water fountain? Um, I would suggest sealing it with something made for outdoors. I use Big Top or whatever we happen to have, but it's not technically made for a water fountain. So something that's waterproof, right? Especially a water fountain. It's going to get very wet, obviously. Yeah. Some sort of exterior, like marine varnish, something like that. 
Will you be making more sheep cutting boards? We've talked about it. Um, hope we might do. A, it's in like, the future. I just need to take like a, probably a couple days and make a bunch of inventory for the shop. Right now we're in the middle of trying to do craft kits. So that takes priority over that kind of stuff. So, so maybe February will take a week and make that priority. Cause somebody asked, how do you get all your projects done? We always have a hit list every week of the things that have to be done. Like right now we're working on um, getting the thrift haul done and we legit will just keep on plugging away till it's all done. So we started oh, yesterday. This is a mirror. If you didn't see it Saturday, it's this the, is, the mirror sitting right here, but she it's didn't foam. She didn't want it to be painted, but the problem is the foam is peeking through. Yeah. So it really needs, she wanted it as close to this um, as we could. So I'm going to start with weathered wood and I'm probably actually just going to dry brush weathered wood on there. Then I'll let that dry, come back with faded burlap, let that dry, and then maybe a dark wax. And then we can get a similar look. But some of the foam is peeking through, so I didn't want to sell it as Yeah, it's is. like yellow spray foam almost is what it looks like. I'm painting a hutch with farmhouse finishes. Would you suggest to seal it? Um, no, I wouldn't. It has a built-in sealer, unless it's like going to get a lot of... If it's going to be real high use and it's like a hutch in your kitchen that might get like yeah. grease on it and food. But like in your dining room? But yeah, if not. it's just sitting in your dining room or up against the wall and you're you're getting in there like three times a year to get your china out of it. Like, no, you're, you're totally good to go. It's that built in sealer is plenty tough for that. Uh, Marsha's going back to weed whacking. It must be warm where you live. Oh, weed whacking. And there's no, there's no yard work. That sounds here. awesome. So I'm actually just kind of hitting it anywhere. The foam was showing through. Okay. So all I'm just setting stuff forward to dry. I'm going to, I'll be right back. I've got a project up in the shower. It was that big galvanized tote. Um, I sanded it down with some 80 grit and then it had kind of some squiggles in the shiny galvanized metal. So I then sanded it down with some 220 grit. Probably took me a whole minute and a half to do both of those grits. Um, and then I used some toilet bowl cleaner. We usually use the Kirkland brand from not the Kirkland, but the Costco, Lysol. the Costco, um, Lysol brand. I don't know why that matters, but this but is, it, it does. we just found that that works the best. <laughs> this is what we had here. I just, I just took a scrubby brush and did it. It's up in the shower right now, so which is why I'm not, not showing Costco, you. That's from Amazon. So hopefully it works. Oh no. I know. 75 well, degrees in Louisiana. We need to go visit. Yeah. We'll see if that we'll see if this works, but I just took the scrub brush, run it all over where I, I sanded it, and I'm gonna go check on that, rinse it off, and see if we get any rust. We're gonna yeah, try I made him to do age it in it. the bathroom where there's lots of ventilation and I'll be right back. He was gonna just do it here on the live video. I was like, that's that's a bathroom activity. All right, I just want to make sure I've got a pretty good base coat. I'm not worried about full coverage, and then I'm gonna set this aside so it can dry. And then I'll get to like whatever the next project is. I really can bust out like quite a few projects. Yesterday we had the drop cloth out most of the afternoon um, on the island. We didn't paint all day yesterday. I did finish those projects in the afternoon because we went thrifting in the morning and I did an edited thrift video. So if you guys watched yesterday's thrifting video, I edited that. Normally Zeb edits, but I've been doing my own editing so that way Zeb can work on different things. Um, like we've started in the basement. Hold on, there should be paint here and I don't want that to come off. We've started in the basement. So he was able to clear out the basement while I was editing the video. So I'm not as good at editing as Zeb, but I can bust out a video when necessary. Has anyone used Lysol toilet bowl cleaner to clean brass? I have not. All right, I think I got most of this covered. By the time I get all my paint layers on, there won't be any random foam sticking through. I think originally this came from Hobby Lobby. It's going to look better, I promise. Okay, it's big, so it's got to go out of the way. Oh, I've got to paint that bunny lid too. So that will be back eventually. And people ask, how do you not get paint everywhere? Um, I get paint everywhere. I have to clean it. That's why we're working on in February, our goal after we get, so we're cleaning the basement because we're moving kids around. We're finally getting to that. We've got to finish the basement so we can move the playroom. 
kids all have their own rooms. Then the next big project is that we've got to work on the second floor of the church renovation. If you don't know what the church is, that's where our shop is. We bought an old church and we have space where we can do a workshop. And so I'm super excited to do that. I will still probably do some projects at home, but it'll be nice not to have it always on my kitchen counter. You should see us when we're like cooking dinner or making cheese around the projects that are currently drying. <laughs> it's a frequent occurrence here. And then we also have to move our sheep and chickens to a different spot at our church shop. That's where we keep our animals. Um, we're moving them to a smaller location because they don't use their whole area right now. I'm moving the garden to a bigger location. So those are the projects we've got coming up. All right, this was just a like pickle jar that somebody had painted with this, I don't know, weird green color and they glued a rabbit on it. And I am, I think it just needs a new paint job. I didn't love the green. It worked pretty well. So it used to be a pretty bright, shiny, galvanized like that. And now we've got some good discoloration. And it didn't sit for a long time either. No, it's been sitting since we've been live. I did it like right before we hit the go live button. So the longer you let it sit, the better it gets. Also, I'm going to put some vinegar on it right now with just like a cloth. And you're going to see if you can get it. It'll, rusty. it'll rust. There it should. I'm just going to keep painting this bunny while you do that. This is going to need multiple coats. I think that they spray painted this, this putrid green color. It's a high chance. I kind of want to do a video, though, where we take cute farm animals and we glue them to jar lids because I do find them often. Okay, so this is um, distilled white vinegar. Doesn't matter the brand, apple cider vinegar seems to work just fine too. So Hope says, I'm just starting to thrift flip. How long did you thrift flip before it started paying for itself? Mm -hmm. So we actually started with furniture and by the time we started thrift flipping like this, um, we had already been thrift flipping furniture for years. And so we pretty much have always made money at this. We just started doing smaller items to, for our booth. And then eventually we had our own store and our website and all those things. Um, and so it always was worked well for us. But as far as like painting and flipping furniture, I made money pretty much from the get go. I had five bucks. I bought a piece of furniture, sold it for 50 bucks or 60. I can't even remember. Took that money, put some in the bank for me, bought more furniture, sold it. And then it just kind of dominoed. And it was probably what, like four years into the business before we really started doing smaller thrift flips. Yeah. We would do markets and have hardly any smaller things to sell, all big furniture items. And then we saw that we needed to use all the space. And that's when we started incorporating thrift flips. All right. I'm going to set this aside and see if it gets rusty at all. It may not react that quickly. Leslie, you are live. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. Carolyn said she loved my um, thrift flip video that I did a good job. Thank you. I film. So if you ever see a video that I edit, I film it entirely on my phone and edit it on my phone because I'm not very good with a computer. I could be, but I also have ADHD. And so the time it would take me to get better, I'm unlikely to be It's easier if she can go sit on the couch, hold the dog and, uh, you know, occasionally re respond to a comment that comes well, up in her notifications in the middle of editing. <laughs> what did you want to put on that tote that you painted? Are you going to stencil it? Yeah. I have gonna... a bunch of the minis right here. I'll probably just do something there. Okay. I just need to get started on something else. I've run out of things to do. Um, you can heat gun that. We need to get it dry so I can distress it. And we can also heat the gun this. It needs a second coat. Right, We're at the heat gun coat. stage of the live stream. This is where people get to this watch see your commercial break. <laughs> you can go get a drink. You know, feel free. I'm not um, going to miss anything super exciting. Although... We might this dried something. pretty quick, so I'm going to decoupage it right now. Okay. Did you? Aha, you have all the brushes over here. Okay. All right. This is DIY liquid patina, our favorite decoupage transfer gel medium situation. And, you know, I think. It's safe to say that since we have a decoupage line of paper that we sell, that we create, 
that we can we can say that we can we're an authority we are <laughs> although i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that are definitely better at it than us i'll say that i would say everything that we do there's somebody better than us yeah. i mean that's just the way that's like life. that's life that's like saying you're the fastest person in the world and then there's like twenty thousand people that aren't even competing in your event that are probably faster than you Oh, Sherry's listing on the ladders, installing the awning by herself. Oh. We have some awning to install this year, too. This spring, we we kind of finished the farmhouse, the house that we live in. If you're just joining us, you probably don't know this, but we completely gutted and renovated a 100-year-old house and then built a big addition. But on the addition, the front just looks like a barn. And so we actually have awnings we're supposed to put up. But the architects designed them, and then we never did it. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't critical to life. No, we and just didn't finish it's it. Still not critical. <laughs> it is critical. All right, so this is the um, hot pink chinois, if I pronounced it correctly, JRV decoupage paper. We have over 200 retailers, so you can go to jrvwholesale.com and find a retailer. Um, just make sure they have it because we carry a lot of things and not everybody cares all of them. Um, and if you can't find a retailer, you can go to JamieRayVintage.com and we do sell it on our website. So there's the little commercial. I'm going to just record like a Jamie Ray Vintage commercial. And then whenever I want to do it, I'll just like hold the player to my mic. <laughs> Is that um, so you don't so forget Sandra, anything? So Sandra, if your paper always wrinkles, a couple of things. You can use the iron method. We did a video on it once, or just look up decoupage iron method, and there's lots. Or you can use more decoupage medium. We always get some wrinkles, and I can show you a project that I finished, but I prefer it because I want that textured finish. You can also use a steamer. I've seen people use that too. Okay, this is pretty well dry. Do you want me to dry the inside, or are you really just distressing the outside on this? Yeah, just distress the outside. The inside will be all right. It'll be what it is in Okay, there. I'm going to show them real quick the butterfly tray. Oh, yes. That we did. We did not do We did not do the iron method on this. No iron. And there it's, are It would be some hard wrinkles. to get an iron in there. But to me, that's part of the beauty. So if you guys remember this tray, it was all galvanized like this on the bottom, and it had an ugly situation in it. And so we decoupaged some real funky floral. Yeah. We decoupaged our, our uh, monarch chromatic paper in here. And then I did weathered wood and white waxed to kind of make it look more like a cement tray, even though it's metal. So you can see there's wrinkles. We accentuated that by waxing their inside. Can you guys see the wrinkles? But I like the way it looks. Anyways, this one I think is still available. And then I can show them. I have one more thing. Have you not? Are you showing them all the things? Well, I was we just going to show them this dry? other one that hasn't sold yet. This was already spray painted white, which was perfect because I just did weathered wood and clear wax. How cool. It's like, a, and I took the, remember it had like those metal things. Zeb and I have a debate. I do not like metal rings on the side of my things and Zeb loves them. I feel like she's like, that looks kind of primitive and medieval. I don't like it. I feel like it looks very 1995. <laughs> so I ripped them off this time and I will probably continue to be ripping them off, but I think it turned out pretty good and I even painted the inside. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't think about ripping them off before. I'm going to wait for this to dry. I was going to paint the edge one more time because you can see where I grabbed it, but I'm going to wait for it to dry. Then I'll distress it. But here is our butterfly with the paper on it. That's cute. He wanted to do butterfly paper on it, but I was worried it would be like cut off. Yeah, we have a sparks. paper. We have like two or three papers with lots of butterflies on them. And we did a box last week with this paper. So cute. All right. So this is dried if you want to keep working on that. And then yeah. I'll dry my Do we have chest. any sandpaper out? I'll just sand it right here. We'll make a big old mess and add texture to everything I paint afterwards. Sherry says 10 by 20 aluminum. The roofers didn't do my roof right. Had a huge tent out for almost two years. Oh, no. That busted when we had snow. Every muscle is screaming. Oh man! If yeah. anybody understands every muscle screaming in a de like a house renovation DIY project, I feel you. Can you um, oh, yes. fix the screen? Sorry. We probably just got super bright. Better now. Are you over there hiding behind the logo? No, you, I'm fine. 
There we go. Now you can see my mess in the background, the paper that I just ripped up, my drying. I actually cleaned the uh, countertop before we went live. I feel like that's the other thing I do enjoy about filming in the kitchen is it does get Zeb to, he didn't help this time because he was doing other stuff, but Zeb will clean the kitchen if it's for a video. I randomly do the dishes about once a month. Once a month? <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> But anyways, it always gives me a good excuse to clean up my kitchen. It's that's usually a, not too bad. That's a character building children's chore currently. Sometimes the children are at home. And yesterday was a big dish day because Zeb made cheese. Yes. And I made a late dinner. So there were all the supper dishes and cheese making pots. In fact, there's still a pot soaking in the sink. So no, no cheese recipe on the Homestead channel yet. But I think I've got it dialed in enough. I've made it about five times now. To where I like the changes I've made to the recipe because I don't know why, for whatever reason, I'm like, oh, I think this would be better if I did it like this. And I always change every recipe out there. I don't know why I do it. I just did. I think this week on the homesteading video, probably go up tomorrow or Thursday, um, we're going to do bread on there. Last week, the video was just a recipe. And we have found that people prefer more of a loose vlog style. They kind of want to see all the random things we're doing. Yep. So we'll, we'll have some barn cleaning, maybe throw in a bread recipe with uh, actual blog to the recipe so that you can just do that if you want. Amper says you could make a butterfly mold and put it in the plain part uh, on the paper. Oh yeah, you can yeah. put a mold on there and give it some more texture. Molds are great for that. I need to go get more paper clay. I left mine out and got hard. I tried the paper towel trick, so we'll see if that works. Zeb's using sandpaper to distress. I'm not a fan of using that in the house unless I have to, so I'm going to use make a some damp dust. rag. It does make some dust. But I have a fix for that right now. The vacuum? Yep. Oh, we're getting some rust. I'll show you in a minute. The vinegar worked on his project. Oh, Renee prefers when we do the stream yard if we're live both places because she can't listen to Facebook on her earbuds. Renee's my sister. All right. Um, I need a washcloth. I, I got up and I was like, what did I get up for? Did you guys ever do that? You're just super excited that the vacuum's out. Uh, the vacuum was distracting. Jamie has a vacuum obsession. We've been through like 20 in the last year trying to find that perfect vacuum. We still haven't. I hate vacuums. None of them work. None of them work well. Okay, I'm just going to use a damp rag to wet distress the box. All right. So I want it to look aged and worn. Use those, use those. I really do love the peach one. But I think it's too, I don't know. I it like does the have Dundee one. The Dundee one. That's not in this bunch. Right there. Oh. That's not Dundee. Well, it's marmalade. <laughs> All right. I'll paint the bottom in a minute when we're not worrying about uh, stuff drying. Okay. Well, sometimes I don't paint here. the bottom. Sometimes I just, I just personally will sand the bottom. I'll take it out to the garage when I'm all finished and sand it so it's not a hot mess under there. Is our cow miniature? No, she's just small for a jersey. We are breeding her with a miniature, so her calf should be small. Little 38 and a half inch at the shoulders bull is what yeah, we got. Well, she's already been bred. I and that's say. tiny. Hopefully, like, hopefully it takes. Most mini jerseys maybe they're leaning towards the medium side, but most bulls are over 40 inches and a lot of them are around 44, 45 and he's 38 and a half. So I'm it's, excited to see what happens. It's wildly popular to have a small mini here. So we thought it would be good to tell them her. why. Oh, but why? Cause they eat less and they still give about a uh, gallon and a half to two gallons also, of milk a day. Everything's cute when it's little. And they take up a lot less room too. Like you can just have, 
if you're if you're just a family and you're not trying to sell your milk a gallon and a half is plenty a day trust me we drink a lot of milk around here and we can't keep up with buttercup and she's yeah. occasionally like if it's a nice warm sunny day she'll randomly because i only milk her once a day that's how we got her she was weaned down to once a day milking um and i've left her there through the winter and probably will until she has her calf because it's been over a year since she's had a calf so we're gonna freshen her up this fall here but anyway she randomly will give two and a half gallons of milk i'm like what am i gonna do with all this the <laughs> neighbors it appreciate it and we make cheese and stuff but are you gonna keep the calf no we don't have space to house two animals so once we can wean the calf we will sell the calf you probably don't want to hear this, but if it's a boy calf, we might board it somewhere and then just keep it for meat. Sorry. <laughs> we we eat farm animals here. Um, but if it's a heifer, then we'll sell, sell it to somebody that wants to raise it for a dairy cow. Because right now, um, our milking cow lives on our, in our neighbor's backyard, and there's really not room for two cows there. So buttercup is an A2, A2 protein um cow which is important because if you have intolerances to milk some people are just fine on that kind of milk because it's it's basically the same protein as most mammals have i've talked about this before so if you've heard this and you go to sleep for a sec that's fine but several thousand years ago cows mutated um probably from overbreeding and things and that's a lot of what causes the intolerance is most of your commercial dairy cows are like a A2, B2, or B1, I can't remember, um, on their proteins. Um, and she's an A2, A2. So Eliza, who is lactose intolerant, can I can make her butter that she can eat just fine without having to take any lactate or medication or anything. Um, I, she can have the milk. She can eat all the ice cream the sour cream, the yogurt, she does fine with all of that. No issues at all. Like doesn't even like make her gassy or hurt. Um, and so this little bull that we, we bred buttercup with is also, he produces A2, A2 so far. They haven't had one that's not. And he's been around since 07. So yeah, it says, I hope it's a girl. <laughs> I hope it's a girl too. Because Zeb would like to figure out a way to store her somewhere um get her trained up and then sell buttercup and have the mini have i would also like a smaller cow buttercup is amazing she's really sweet really gentle but most jerseys are or find a couple of acres in town that he can have multiple cows on that's you know but uh that's yeah, pretty so pricey like an acre in utah is not cheap right now especially not in lehigh lehigh's spendy all right i need to i don't like the way that can i see your temperature yeah this is so textured Okay, need a little work right here. The wood is so textured; it's this. This is not picking up all of the uh, detail, but it got most of it. I got a little juicy on a couple pieces. Let me dry it off, and then I'll show it to you. And then I'm gonna distress the stencil. I have to decide. Well, I can't use that one because you used it. I'm gonna go look in the stencil box. So I think I want to do What are you dimension. after? You need something bigger? I think so. Okay. Our situation over All here. Right. Is oh, let me bring, come up around and focus it for you. We're going to get the handle on in just a sec. There we go. And this is about four and a half, five inches to give you an idea of how big this stencil is. Actually, wait a tick. The actual stencil, stencil part is right about five inches. Do you have an extra stencil brush over there? Um, negative Ghost Rider. Negative Ghost Rider? Okay. Yeah, I, actually, five by I five watched. is how big this stencil is. So give you an idea of how big the toad is too. Okay. You guys are shocked we're going French on this. Drill's coming on. There we go. I'm happy to see the grain come through on that toad. We love to buy things that are heavily textured because it just is delicious when you distress it. Okay. And, make sure this is centered. and then move it down a little. 
I have to talk to myself while I do it or I can't do it. Focus. 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 This is my focus face. Gonna have faded burlap. I'll just use that for stenciling. Yes. And I have a brush with it on there too. That's fine. I need to. Oh, you got a stencil brush. So you'll see us when we're stenciling that we offload. It's because you don't want to have too much paint on your brush. I don't know if Zeb told you that, but. I'm just going to paint over the edge of these screws now that they're on there. Yeah. Sometimes I don't love the swirl because it doesn't get enough paint on there. Well, and sometimes it goes up underneath. There's definitely times when it's a good thing to have. All right. What do you guys think? Is that tote better? Did we help it out or did you like the dark stain? And the lone star. And the lone star. I think it's better for Leslie. Yeah, well, who's it's, it's going true. to That's Leslie. About it. And once we're all done, once this is dry inside, I'm just gonna put a coat of clear wax on it and this will be finished. So Leslie's gonna own all the totes, all the drawers. I am gonna really quickly just hit this with a little distress over the stencil. It's looking oh, a little that stark. Was that might have gone underneath. It's looking a little stark, and I want it to look like it's been on there for a long time. There we go. Zeb is definitely the better, more patient stenciler. I'm like, this is taking too long. <laughs> Do you need me to heat gun? I'm going to move this out of the way so it's out of the splash zone since it's already done. I'll get back to comments in a minute, guys. I'm just using faded burlap to stencil this with. Remember I said dark and light contrast, so whenever I do a dark paint, then I'm gonna stencil with a light color. And faded burlap is a light to medium shade. Did I get it everywhere? Okay. I hope I didn't mess up. Oh, it looks good. I'm crossing all my toes over here right now. All right. So I like that. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to see if I've got a pool. If I don't, I'm going to put a find a pool to go right there. I just had the box of extra pools out. So it's right on the top there. Like they're, in my green cabinet? Yeah, in your green cabinet. The thing is, I think it's mostly knobs. Yeah, it is most. Oh, you want a. Okay, I got you. You want a pool, not I want a knob. A pool. Um, I if might I don't have, have any here, I know I have some. I might have one in the garage. At the church. Oops. I don't know if she knows she's still mic'd up dropping all the stuff. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so second coat's giving me really the coverage I want. The only reason it wasn't full coverage is because I handled it a lot before while it was still wet. And we will distress this too because it's, you know, distressing fixes all the painting sins. Okay. All right, let me go. My bucket is getting rusty. I'm going to go off camera for just a second and I'm going to show you that. I think this one might be too big. I have this leftover from our kitchen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess we go down over the front. I feel like that's fine. I think it's cute. Can I get a screw in there? Is the question. Yes. All right. See how this is starting to rust up. If I had like dripped it. this on here, like prefer, I, I wiped it on with a paper towel, but preferably if you spray it on there, you'll get the running rust and it'll look like it's just been like outside. And the more you do it, you can kind of see where I swirled a little bit with the, the stuff. I can go back over and it'll redo the the age and the texture on there but we went from bright shiny galvanized that's i'm gonna leave the inside like that because you know that's fine um to rusty and a little crusty and all i did was this toilet bowl cleaner worked i sanded it a little bit hit it with the toilet bowl cleaner and then rinsed that off and then we hit it with some distilled vinegar the white distilled vinegar and that's what's given us this rustiness. And so if, if you have galvanized like this, or you got like a bunch of little galvanized pots or flower buckets and you don't want to paint them and you want them to go like older like this, 
It's a real quick, simple process. Um, usually takes about 15, 20 minutes with the uh, cleaner on it. I like to leave rinse. the cleaner on all day. If it's Jamie summertime, I just throw it forever. outside. <laughs> Um, somebody asked if I was going to paint the bottom of this. I'm actually not going to um, paint the bottom. When it's all finished off camera, I'll take it outside and sand any paint that got on the bottom because it's actually like I'll scrape off all the tags, sand it so it's neat, and then just leave it the way that it is. Did you second coat this already, or is this the first coat? I didn't even touch that. Well, it's got some really good coverage on that shiny uh, – <laughs> Ceramic I situation. I'm gonna wax this. This is just DIY's clear wax, and I'm gonna set this aside while the wax sets up, and I'm gonna put another coat on my bunny. Sherry's on a tea break. Is the wood tote sold? Yes, the one Zeb was working yeah. on is sold. Leslie bought it on Saturday. The last I checked, my chest is still available. I will drop. Let me drop the link again to the. Yeah, I think I think this is still available, and I think this is. I'm not sure about the butterfly. Oh, shouldn't have touched it. Going to have to paint some more. If you check our thrift haul, it'll show you all things that are available. What you might see when you go to look is that it'll be like its original picture because we don't have an updated picture because we're working on them right now. I feel like so, people wouldn't know that. Well, but sometimes they don't look anything like they... Or like, if you're watching the replay, I, yeah. if it doesn't sell, I will update the picture. I usually will update the photos before I take it to the shop. But I only update the photos of the things that are still available. I don't spend, if it's sold, I don't bother to update the photo because it's sold. So I was going to dark wax this, but this has this dark inset where I, I want the detail to. anyway. So I think I'm just going to wet distress this. I'm going to put one more coat on. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd go with one more coat, especially over that cream yeah. area, just because it's a little streaky. But Yeah, so I'm going to put another coat on. And that's the beauty of painting with pretty much one color. We've got... <laughs> Sherry says, and here I took all the rust off my milk cans. Sometimes you have to. Those milk cans. So get the so milk loud. cans. So I get oh, that I though. Like this. sometimes when you're taking the rust off because you want to paint them, yes, I'm not. it's fine. Let's Just go see. heavy with the wax and then wipe it back, and you should get like almost like a wet distress if it's you wipe it back fine. heavy. But yeah, sometimes you got to get that rust off if you want to paint them or preserve them. Like a rust can is more valuable than that galvanized tin thing. They're they're cool. They got a lot of history to them. That came from walmart i'm just trying to make it look old well, we bought it at the thrift store but originally yeah originally it, it was walmart. walmart it still had the new tag on it <laughs> and i have no idea how much it costs but our postman is probably like these people are always filming Every we time. live in town so our postman comes up to the porch and puts our mail in our cute little yeah, mailbox the old part porch. of town all the new neighborhoods, all the post boxes are out on the street or there's like a big box for the whole neighborhood that goes and gets it. But he goes to every house and takes it up to every, it's like the box is on the house in the neighborhood we live in. Becky says, love you guys. What a sweet couple. Thanks, Becky. Life is real. Life is, Life is so very real, real around here. It's like so real. People are like, I can't give it. You're so great because you're real. I'm like, you know what? I don't. Sometimes I feel like I should. Just don't know. walk by us on the track in the morning. Yeah, it does. We're barely Shut awake and we're a little salty. Yeah, we are solving the life's, <laughs> the world's problem. I try not to talk too loud around people. La last couple of days, we've solved like 90% of the world's major issues walking around that track. <laughs> now, if we could just implement those, you know, we'd you be know, good to go. It takes a minute. I'm going to let that cure up a little bit before I. Yeah, does this need to be waxed? Oh, it's still wet inside. Yeah, it's still a little wet. I'm going to wax the front just so you guys can see. It's going to get a lot more um, contrasty because yeah. that weathered wood gets nice and dark. We'll wax the whole thing later. And it will lighten up like a little bit. And you said you were going to paint the bottom, but I think we should just sand it. You think so? Well, the top, actually, that does go with the handle pretty yeah. well, like if it's ever visible on like, I don't like know a glass shelf or something. All right, so there you go. That you can see that it darkened up that weathered wood quite a bit to wax it. We'll wax the whole thing later. Okay, next project. I gotta get back to my bunny because my bunny needs another coat, and I gotta dry it. We got approximately fifteen minutes before we gotta get ready for our other live stream. All right, we already have our notes ready for business coaching. That's our next live. So if you guys are in business coaching, we'll be live at one thirty in our private Facebook group. I titled it Topic Buffet because we're talking about like four totally unrelated things. 
today. You have to be careful when you're heat gunning not to overdo it. Well, you're dealing with like spray paint underneath and probably resin. Oh yeah, I don't know what I don't know what I'm dealing with. That's the thing about painting used stuff. You don't know what it's made of. But you know, it's part of life. It's part of the excitement. Do you have a wet distress rag? Yeah, but you need to wring it out because it has it. dark weathered wood all over it. I was wondering if we already had a designated drag. Oh, I got some thick drippies over here. Watch out for that. So this second coat here will finish this off. I'll let it dry, and this will probably get a white wax because I like that look. I could do a white dry brush too, but I'm not. I'm in a wax. It's been a waxy day. I've waxed almost everything. So this is weathered wood on this bunny situation here. So I don't know about you guys, but just seeing this like this, this all one color looks a lot better to me. It's looking pretty much like all of Jamie's totes that she's, or uh, crocs that she's got around. Faded burlap and sandy blonde are really good colors when you want to do a croc look. It's a croc. Every time I touch it, I pull off the paint. Stop touching it. I know. But then I see a spot, I'm like, oh, I need to paint that. All right, Bunny, I'm leaving you alone. Okay. <laughs> How can we join the business group? If you go to jamierayvintage.com and click, sorry, I put it on there for you, but I can't drop the link. If you go to jamierayvintage.com and click subscriptions, you're going to see our craft kit subscription which if you wanted the Corbel craft kit, the sign up is the 20th is the cutoff and then they'll be shipping after that. Um, and then they go out every three months, we have different kits. But underneath that, we also have creative business coaching and that's in the subscription tab on our website. Click that, you sign up and then you send an email and Mariah will add you to the private group. It takes a few days to get added and all that kind of stuff. So just be patient with that, but that is how you get added. Um, you mentioned you were making bread. Will be gluten free? No, you, I can make gluten free bread. So we have it's done it. Um, we don't. I haven't found a flour that's like a gluten free one to one flour that's tasty or even rises like regular flour. So we use kumut, which does have some gluten, but it's a higher protein, ancient grain. And so far, I've been able to tolerate it just fine. Um, whereas before, when I would eat bread, and I would, didn't even really put the two together. I would have like pretty serious bowel issues all day. It just kind of got to be something I was like living with and got used to my whole life, or at least for a long time. I can't remember ever not having it. Um, but I don't have those issues with the kamut flour. All right. What do you think? Is that too topy coming through? Do I need to dark wax it now? I would clear wax and dark wax. Clear it. wax, then dark. Where's your clear? Mm. Let me show you up close what I'm talking about. Here. There's just not enough contrast. It, not, not enough of that dark came through. And it's like a... What about pinky. almond flour? It just, we don't like it. And here's the thing. Some of the gluten-free flours, while if you are completely gluten intolerant, are better for you than gluten, right? But they're garbage. No offense. But they're just not... A, they got to do a lot of things to get them to what bake they like have regular to do bread. To make the, the things they have to put in them to make them taste good as bread... Some of that stuff is Disclaimer, just not healthy. This is science and uh, health, according yes. to so Jamie and Zeb. We've done a lot of research. And if this you're is a what nutritionist, you might disagree with me, but like we just feel like leaving things the way that they came before everything got modified is better. And so the reason we use kamut is because it's an ancient grain. It's high in protein and it allows for better processing by the body. So if you can tolerate, to me, that would be better. But if you can't have any gluten, no matter what, then you got you got to do what you got to do. I have, so that recipe that I just put out, I have used like gluten-free for my sti sticky toffee pudding, one-to-one um, -one flour. Like the one from Costco, yeah. the Namaste. Yeah, and it still turned out pretty good. Like it tasted delicious. Yeah, we don't know about everything. Like somebody said, what about lupine flour? We've only used what we've used. We've used Costco's one-to-one -one when we did complete gluten-free and we've used the Food Nanny Kamut and that's 
and it works here's, for us. So we're unlikely to try anything else. Yeah, here's the thing. Like we were experimenting, 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 found Kamut. It worked really great. Still is working great. We're like, okay, we're done. <laughs> so if you're having those issues, I would just say experiment. See see what you can tolerate. See what's, Talk to your doctor or yeah. health professional. But I will tell you right now, most doctors do not. They don't they, even know They just it. know that you shouldn't have gluten if you're not supposed to have gluten. And they've never really done research into stuff we see a functional medicine doctor and the way she does it is she does a lot of blood work so she keeps track of zeb's hashimoto's by blood work and he gets that blood work done about once a quarter so we can make sure that we're not trying anything that's not well good. also i feel like she's like experimenting a little with me because she's like i never really heard about commit let's see what happens <laughs> your thyroid's <laughs> already shot so she's like doing a case study and gonna publish it <laughs> maybe all right, so I'm just That's painting. part of that disclaimer that you sign at the doctor's office. Our, doc our doctor is first diet, then supplementation, then medication when necessary. Yeah, she's pretty great. And that's how we roll too, so it works out well. Oh, something I forgot to mention in our video, though, when I was doing the sugar-free. The reason that, like... Here, we're, we're going to talk about this for a second, then we'll get back to I'm just projects. painting, so we'll have a little... The, the reason that the sugars I used, um, the organic maple syrup and the coconut sugar, that I can tolerate them okay is because they process like I ate a banana or I ate the coconut. Um, but there's still sugars, right? You still want to keep your sugar intake pretty low. So, you know, use it judiciously. You're not going to be like, okay, I can just eat all of this I want. It's not going to be good for you. No. From what I've read, you need like glucose and fructose to digest properly. And like regular sugar is just glucose. Does that sound right? I don't know. So we try to do stuff that's like more natural or whatever. There you go. All right. So I went ahead and waxed this whole thing now that we're off of our food soapbox. And Zeb <laughs> cannot eat fake sugar. No, it, uh, it might as well be eating wheat. It goes right through him. Well, or, I'm going to detail. Oh, and if you want our Homestead channel, it's just Jamie and Zeb. I can drop a link later. But if you, you look up a... Jamie and Zeb on Zeb Z E B on YouTube, you can find it. Sorry. What? Um, no, I just needed a dark wax stencil brush, and I got one right here. We're gonna call this a wax brush. This one and a half is pretty big. Oh, well, we don't have dark wax out either. All right. Got the oh, white and the clear. Using it. I'm probably not going to get this window finished. I'm going to tell you right now it's not happening in the time we got left. So I will try to share it in stories later if I can remember. White wax. Did we use up all? Oh, there's some. Are you looking for white wax? Dark. Oh, I'm like. We go in phases. We were using a ton of dark wax and we used it all up. And now we've got a bunch of white wax in there. And. I was having a struggle finding it. I'm having a struggle with this giant piece. It's being a mess. All right. So what I will do once this is all dry is I'll wet distress it to bring back layers. And then I will probably dark clear wax it, dark wax it, maybe white. I don't know. It needs, it needs uh, some layers here. All right. So we kind of are back to where we started with this, right? I was dark brown before. And like that peachy pink color. But it's all going to be the same sheen. That's what I thought was yeah. weird. It was like really shiny in the middle. I need more. I don't know. Where to and then this. I'm going to. Um, What's going on? I'm, I'm going to carry some of this dark wax over into the rest of it. I just didn't want a heavy dark wax in. Did I forget to clear? I forgot to clear wax the entire back of that box. Well, I guess you can do it later. Oh, that's looking so good. Help me, so help me. Somebody probably said that in the comments and I just missed it. They mentioned that you can forgot you put, to do it. When you're done with that, can you put the hook on mine? Yeah. Where'd the clear wax go? Can you, oh, it's right over there. Can you get it? Yeah. With your, your little, monkey arms? Your little T-Rex arms. You have monkey arms. I have T-Rex arms. Yep. They, um, Sherry says, I love that piece. Sherry says that she'll check out the channel. She needs to move. She, she, I need mountains and a ski resort. I don't ski, but 
Harrington. Well, I will show you plenty of mountains on there. I'll get a shot of the mountains. We have some really amazing views of the mountains everywhere in Utah, pretty much. The Wasatch Front is like 11,000 foot high mountains runs all across this whole valley where the bulk of the population of Utah is. All right, now that's wax. All right, so I'm just adding some wax where I want to see a little more. And it, it is pulling off some of this paint because this was super shiny and it's not cured. But I'm okay with that. It gives it like a really worn look. Jamie, did I miss your answer about the wax on the chest? I had to go mute for a minute. I did not see your question. So go ahead and ask again because I'm probably done for a hot second. Uh, we've been on about an hour and we've got about 15 minutes before our next live for business coaching. And can you fix the camera? Sorry. Oh, yep. That is the hour mark. That's that the, the indication mark. that we've been on here. I think that turned out pretty good. Yeah, it's better than it was like for it sure. Looks And it's going to look a little splotchy, but once it dries, it'll be less splotchy. So I normally wouldn't pick these up, but I really liked the detail in the middle. And I knew that if I painted it, I could really bring that out and uh, and help it be more uniform. And I think I think we got it. Now, if you didn't want to see this other color in here, you could just not wet distress and wax, and you probably wouldn't get much of that coming through. It's a really pretty vase. The Homestead channel is Jamie and Zeb, and I'm looking it up right now, and I'll drop that link. Can you put the... We only have two videos up on there. We're doing a video a week because we don't want to kill ourselves. Between... Then there would be no channel between what we're already doing and everything else. It's just, it's just, uh, it would be a lot, except for now when I clean the barn, I'll take you along with me. <laughs> There's the channel. Sorry guys, that didn't come out. And then I'm going to scroll back to the question I missed. That's part of my ADHD. I'm like, I should have just waited for the question, but then I was like, Oh, let me go ahead and drop this link. Okay. There's the channel link. Um, let's see. Question. After using DIY paint on a project, should you wax before or after applying the IOD transfer? So, um, never wax under the transfer. I have put transfers over wax, but only after they've cured for a really long time. Like a year long time. So either use a liquid top coat or wait for the transfer to dry really, really well. And if you distressed it at all, you better remove all of that dust. Um, Debbie actually just did a video where she put the transfer directly on it without sealing it first. Just like let it dry overnight is your best bet, and then you can put that transfer on. Okay. Okay, um, this is done. And Why? also, if it's super slick and shiny, you might have a struggle again. Like before you put the DIY paint on, if you don't let it cure and you try to put a transfer, you might pull the paint up. So just let that paint dry really well, then transfer, and then you can wax. All right, we got. Let me like see if there's another question. A minute or two, but let, what, what was the end goal with the bunny? Were we going to just white wax it? Jamie? Yeah. Just... Uh, yeah. Jamie, so I knit before it was hip. has an answer. Ask the question again, so I'll have to wait. Ramona said I make her happy because we make her happy because Alaska Thrift is more special. Pretty bowl would seem for the low, low price of $39.99. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, somebody want to know what I want. The chest with I used clear wax. I think that was a question. Clear wax. Did I do the box? Yes. So this is weathered wood, and then I stenciled with faded burlap, one of our French grain sack stencils, of one of the big ones, and then I clear waxed it. And I'm going to have Zeb drop a knob on the front for us, a pull. Ooh, that's got hot. Yeah, I would let, <laughs> let's let that cool off before we. Were you going to white wax it? Okay, let me put the knob or the pull on this. Where's the pull at? So we only have one screw. So, oh, we do have two screws. There we go. These the are the same knob. We sell these on our website as well. Those are the card pulls or something. If you just type in hardware, it should pop up. It's what we have on our cabinets. When did, when did you guys get new wedding bands? I've had this one. This is the one Jamie got me when, when we got married. Um, hers is what, a couple years old? Yeah, um, I have my actual wedding ring, but it has a diamond on it. And, well, actually, it's a fake diamond. It kept losing the diamond and getting bread stuck in it when she would make bread, <laughs> paint and all in it. and. So I switched to just a band because it's more practical. And this is actually, mine's just silver from Amazon. I had a gold one for a long time. It was white gold. 
And in two cars ago, it fell underneath the seat and it was not, it was from Amazon too. And Zen was like, well, it's cheaper for you to just buy a new ring than I was for me to have that seat taken out. So. I was going to pull the whole seat out and then I was like, it still might not be down there. <laughs> so yeah, 925 silver. And this one held up pretty well. All right. Bye, Renee. All right, we're You'll just going to show you this box. We'll do the bunny, um, and then we're probably going to head out. It's one nineteen, so we have like ten minutes. No, we got to set up. We have five up. minutes. We have five minutes. Obviously, we have more time to do. Okay, Where's... you want to flip them around, show the box. Yeah, but hang on, I handled it too much. Did you? Did you touch my box? I have touched your box all over. So that's super cute. You can put like this part here. You can put away. a piece of cardstock in there and like type on it if you wanted to but i like it i will fix the bottom um, and sand that smooth and take all the stuff do you ship paint to alaska colleen we do our website's set up um, lisa said thank you for chatting about hashimoto's and functional medicine i have hashimoto's and mold toxicity and a bunch of other autoimmune i had a functional medicine doctor for nine months it's an amazing journey i have not tried kamut flour thanks for sharing i use coconut everything and do organic food yeah, we use a lot of coconut flour, coconut oil. Yeah, the coconut. that's yeah. a whole other story that's about the oils. Other. We could we could talk about, and we're still trying to find oils that work with us. So, are you okay. going to paint the hinges to match the pool? Nope, I'm going to leave the hinges the way they are. And the I'm surprised pool you is didn't paint those. Did you paint around them? I or did, did and you just... I went distressed it off. Okay, because I liked it. I wanted okay. a little blingy bling on there. Um, so. so the bunny just needs white wax, but it's super hot. It's faded burlap, darker than sandy blonde. No, I think it's lighter in my opinion. Yeah, sandy blonde Just is more bit. yellow. Faded burlap is more like a brown, blue, creamy. Yeah. All right, he's going to white wax that bunny, and then we are going to head out. The bunny, if you guys are just tuning in, the bunny actually goes on this jar that I washed. It's still drying. Oh, did you wash it? Is that why the water was running? Yeah. Oh, did I leave it on for a long time? I just remember hearing the water on. Oh. <laughs> I was like, did I leave the water on, and I forgot that you turned it off? Telling you, when you're married to somebody like me with ADHD, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> I really try to focus. I'm better than I used to be. It's okay. I came down here the other day. It was like 1230 at night. And this burner was on. That on was low. on me. It was just on. <laughs> like, warming up the house here? What are we doing? <laughs> that, was, that was not me. There was no, there was no food. I would blame that on the kids. It could have been your mother randomly. It, sometimes we lean up against it too. But it was on. Like usually it'll just turn the gas oh, on. Well, that's worse. Like it was lit. If it's on. <laughs> that was better that it was on. Yeah. Not just the gas running. In the All gas. right. I cleaned this jar because we, when we thrifted this, it had like some sort of candy in it and I just washed it out real quick. So did not clear wax the bunny first. Um, just went straight for the white wax. I usually only clear wax first when i'm going to do dark wax because for whatever reason the dark is scarier to control the white wax you're like yeah i'll just pull that off with some clear wax if i get too much like an eraser showing you guys what we what we accomplished here and i started my mirror project but that's not going to get finished on this slide we're almost done yeah we did good it's pretty good I, I was like i didn't think we'd get it done. when we don't film it we don't sit here as focused we like walk away while stuff's drying and then it gets to be like six o'clock at night we're like oh yeah we probably should circle back to that um are you gonna pay oh, gonna, uh, ampers sarah said love y'all see you in business coaching we will see you sarah in a little bit she's in business coaching as well and it's okay if when i distress some of that original color comes out like that happens especially, not much is though and it's pretty light. especially if you like wax when something is really fresh sometimes it will pull off that paint because it's not cured so i can't get down in between the legs and there's like this white wax down there so i'm just taking the clear wax brush and just kind of blending it and it's working pretty well so i don't have like a stark outline of where i was just uh pulling the wax off and the, technically this is not a wax brush but i stink and love the ps series of clean on brushes for waxing i use them all the time there we now it almost looks like stone i know Marsha says, awesome projects today. Or no, that won't happen with the new one, right, Jamie? Oh, the new stove. <laughs> right. See, that's what it is, Marsha. I need my new French stove. We actually had a discussion about it today because the self-cleaner wouldn't start on this top oven the other day. 
and she's like this thing's two years old why isn't it not working i'm like I probably, i'm like is that kitchen makeover coming sooner than we think we cook so much like and like legit last night there just wasn't enough room for all the pots that we needed at the same time so it'd be nice to have all right guys we are going to go if you want to search the thrift haul just go to jamie ray vintage click saturday thrift haul you can shop what's left and if you need any of these projects or products we used weathered wood weathered wood faded burlap yep. Um, we used uh, liquid patina and the hot I, pink chinois. I can never remember paper. what you call that paper. Oh, here's this in case you just tuned in. We also decoupage this. We used white wax, clear wax, and some French grain sack stencils and stencil brushes. If I missed any product and you need to know it, just comment below and I'll help you out. Um, all at jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Bye, right, guys. Thanks for joining our sometimes Tuesday paint a palooza. <laughs> it's becoming more and more frequent because we ain't having to paint so many things from the thrift store every week. It's so much more fun with our friends here. For sure.